Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment of our program is brought to you by A.G. Hines Company. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had to uh, build some columns here to put behind our desk to support our, our new special COVID plexiglass barriers. Uh, so as a building project, naturally, I turned to A.G. Hines Company. They have all the materials you need for just about anything. Uh, and what we were able to do, fantastic, because of the materials from A.G. Hines Company. If you are a major contractor, if you're a small contractor, if you are a do-it-yourselfer, they're the group to call. They got a building downtown. Been there since 1920. A. G. Hines Company. Okay, as we mentioned in the last segment, the SEC pushed back its start date until September 26th. This came after the NCAA announced it would allow schools to move up the start of the season. Oklahoma, for example, wanted to get going a week early, play in week zero, and the NCAA said, yeah, okay, everybody can do that. The SEC, however, in theory, if all these games play as expected, the SEC could be seeing schools play three games before they get underway. Uh, they'll see two NFL weekends before they get away, uh, get underway. The SEC's medical experts advise them to monitor those other leagues, those other football games, and they also advise them to push back so they could monitor the rise of COVID once students get back on campus. Okay, everyone's doing one thing, the, tennis, the SEC's doing the other. Who's got it right, in your opinion? Would you be rushing to get this thing underway? Or do you think, hey, listen to the experts, and if we lose games, we lose games? Where are you? I'd, ra I'd rather uh, be on the side of caution on that and let, rather be the one that rushes out there and see what happens and, uh, and it blows up on you. Uh, I'd rather wait it out, and if you're a little bit later, you're a little bit later, you're still the SEC, you're the, the highest watched, the highest demand, the most admired. Um, waiting a couple weeks isn't gonna isn't gonna uh, be the end of all. Unless things get worse. See, yeah, and then yeah I want to say isn't gonna kill you, but it would be inappropriate. I, I was looking at this from two angles. One, I, I think they wanted to try to because I think seven of the hot states of the top ten in the country are in the Southeast Conference, right? Yeah. So you want to have that subside a little bit, so you start a little bit later in part, and also to try to get a grasp of it and see what everybody else is doing. The other thing that, that concerns me a little bit, though, is you're extending this further into what is considered flu season, right? So as somebody once said, uh, COVID-19 is like the flu on steroids. So now you're pushing it back into a, a time frame that may not be all that safe either. I don't know if there is a safe time to do yeah. this. That's why I'm conflicted a little bit about them starting. I thought they would start earlier and build in two open dates. That's what I thought they would do. But they elected to go this way. It may work out. Chuck, they handle it the right way, or would you have gone ahead and run it? I don't think we know for sure right now. I mean, you hope the overall situation, as Jimmy pointed out, was better now. And it would have made some of these decisions easier, but it's not. And then once you get students back on campus, I mean, that's where this uh, go haywire. You're hoping these other leagues got it right the way they're going to do it, because if it blows up on them, how can the SEC necessarily continue to move forward if something really bad happens somewhere else? Depending on how bad it is. Depending yeah. on how bad it is. Exactly. Yeah. That's true. Um, the, uh, the other thing that hasn't been mentioned so far in terms of a plan uh, is how Tennessee will handle attendance, how Tennessee will distribute tickets to those who are allowed to go, if there are fans. I mean, you look around the country, and the talk is that Philip Fulmer is still looking at a 50% capacity. Or less. Or less. Well, he said 20 to 50% on our Okay. Interview. Mike, what I was going to say is mm -hmm. most schools around the country and most pro teams are now looking at 20 to 25. Mm -hmm. I think when you still include 50 in that talk, that's basic best case scenario. Mm -hmm. And so far with COVID, we haven't seen any best case scenarios. Yeah. So my guess is at best you're looking 20, 25,000. And then you're looking at five home games instead of seven. Who gets the tickets and how do you distribute those? Philip Fulmer's just got one headache after another right now because – Whatever you wind up doing, you're going to have complaints on that end as well from fans. You, you are. And so do you give those tickets to those that have donated the most money recently? Or do you give it to that 25 or 30-year donor who doesn't give as much as the more recent donors? That's one of the questions they've got to resolve. I will say this. So I've heard from some people that are season ticket holders and donors that said they're not going to the games. That might open it up to make it a little bit easier. But I wouldn't want to be Philip Fulmer or a ticket manager trying to figure this thing out. No, and there's one other weird aspect to that. You could also look at it if you're UT and say, all right, the younger fans, we're going to need them longer. 
So let's take care yeah. of the young guys because we don't want to lose them for the next 30 years. Whereas the guy who's 70 who's been given, he's not going to be with us for 30 more years. And then you could also spin that as well. We're taking care of yeah, yeah. the older population shouldn't be coming out anyway. Yeah. Well, I, so I think you got to give some fans priority. That's just the that's just the way it I works. Just, the natural seems to be donation yeah. size. And then yeah. is it like a lottery? I mean, that's about as fair as you could do. You opt in. And you want two, four tickets, it's like you're applying for tickets to the Masters, Jimmy. Uh -huh. And then if you're lucky enough to have your number drawn and you get tickets, got the chance to go. I think, I think fans just have to go out into the season thinking that there's not going to be fans. I, I just don't think – it's kind of like we started with the SEC basketball turn. When this all started, it was SEC basketball turn getting canceled, and then it was this. And, and I, I just think it's going down the route to where there, there can't be fans. And, and if fans want football this year, they're just going to have to watch it from uh, TV. Well, and I think that's true. We're going to have two or three subjects today. We're talking a lot of football, a lot of UT, the deeper we get into this thing. Um, a lot of these subjects we're going to be talking about, my view is just be happy with what you get. Yeah. I mean, there's a good chance we don't see anything. So if you get a game and you think your schedule is too tough, I don't want to hear any crying, <laughs> just take it and enjoy watching it. You know, yeah. if, if, you're not get, if you didn't get the seat and somebody you know got the seat, just be glad you can watch something on TV. That's my view. I'm going to be happy with anything I get this year. Yeah, you said earlier, best case scenario with COVID, we haven't had any. Yeah. Best case scenario is death rates are still pretty doggone low, and there's still, still a lot of uh, healthiness going on through it, people making it through it. So there's a lot of good stuff still going on. But I just think from a fan standpoint, we got to be grateful that if we get a full football season, uh, that's something that we'll all be happy about. All right, very good. When we come back, uh, what can we learn from the sports that are already playing? The bubble sports look to be good. Too bad you can't play college football, can't put the team in a bubble. Uh, we'll talk about that and also how can coaches get their players to pay attention to this and behave like monks, as I said. Come on back on the Sports Source.